in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Say in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, receive I receive grace to pray. To pray. Say it again in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, receive grace I receive grace to pray. To pray. Please hear me. The times that we live in are not times of pray for me. You must obtain grace from God to pray. There are times that Joshua Selman will not be there when the gates stand. You must master the art of prayer in its entirety. I did teach you in part one of this series that prayer has four principal assignments in the life of the believer. I don't want to go into it, but um, you have to go back and listen very carefully and understand the dimensions of prayer. Let me do a quick recap. Number one, that the first assignment of prayer is for growth and transformation. When we engage in the ministry of prayer, it supplies the strength for growth and transformation. Number two, an avenue to make petitions and requests. The second assignment of prayer is that it provides an avenue to make petitions and requests. The Bible says that our requests be made known. Philippians 4 and verse 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. King James says, careful, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god the third assignment of prayer as revealed in scripture is for spiritual legislation that means we create possibilities we create realities the bible says where the word of a king is there is power i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound we can create realities and possibilities through the power of prayer. And finally, the fourth dimension of prayer as revealed in scripture is for warfare and intercession. To be able to ward off the arsenals of darkness that fight against our lives and our destinies. You must learn to pray. Key number two, and that's where we left off. I'll take it from there. The second key if you want to contend for mastery if you want your life to rise to a higher level of spiritual excellence is understanding and engaging the laws and principles of the kingdom this is a long one understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom the first key being prayer if you intend to strive for mastery the second key is that you must understand and engage two very important words you can understand and fail to engage you will still not get results you need to understand then obtain grace to engage the laws l-a-w-s and principles of the kingdom in luke chapter 11 and verse 52 luke 11 52 it says woe unto you lawyers jesus is angry now for ye have taken away the key of knowledge the key of knowledge ye entered not in yourself and them that were entering you hindered hallelujah when it has to do with seeing the glory of god revealed in the life of a believer please pay attention there is always a part that you have to play we have emphasized this and i will continue to drum it in this house that every kind of faith work or christian practice that makes the outcome of your life absolutely dependent on god without any participation or partnership on your own part 
and from your own end is inaccurate is incomplete when it has to do with your life and destiny it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 moses told the people that this is what the lord had commanded that ye should do he says and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you you want to see the appearance of the glory don't just wish for the glory there are things to do hallelujah in exodus chapter 33 moses made two requests unfortunately the body of christ only pays attention to one exodus 33 the first request was in verse 13 exodus 33 and verse 13 the first prayer request that moses made was to know the ways of god i pray thee if i have found grace in thy sight show me now thy way that i may know you that was the first prayer then the second prayer five verses later verse 18 he's now requesting moses now in verse 18 i beseech you show me your glory so there is a relationship between his ways and his glory don't just ask for his glory you must know his ways are we learning so discussing the laws my apologies we'll continue discussing the laws that we have i gave us one law from last the last time part one and i think that's where we end the law of the sacrifice of total surrender still remember okay write it down in case you didn't get it that time we're dealing with laws now in fact you can call them laws of dominion that's under part two now so part one you can call it the foundation part two striving for mastery in bracket or under the laws of dominion the first law that i gave us in part one uh, is the sacrifice of total me technical praise god My apologies thank you so the sacrifice of total surrender second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians chapter 5 and we'll look at verse 14 and 15. it says for the love of christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all then we're all dead 15. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. So that Jesus died for you and in his mind, he believed that if you acknowledge or you recognize the depth of sacrifice he made for you, it will no longer be an inconvenience for you to also respond thus to him. You get what the scripture is saying now? that in his mind and in his thinking he gave everything for you first because he loved you but then in hope that if you really understand the extent of his sacrifice you would also be able to make whatever sacrifice it takes the sacrifice of total surrender most believers want to gain mastery they want to command power with god they want to excel at extraordinary levels but they violate this first law the first law of dominion as far as gaining mastery is concerned is absolute surrender not just what you do who you are you must assume a state and a posture in the spirit where your life is completely surrendered i think i've said it in this house that um when you come forward to what we call giving your life to christ in 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 reality you are not giving your life to christ when you come forward to be saved you are receiving his life are we together because there's something wrong with that life that's why you are coming for another one are we together so when you really come to christ you are not necessarily we just say it and we understand what we are saying 
but from a theological standpoint now the the person about to be saved is not giving his life to christ he's receiving the life of christ giving your life to christ is an activity of surrender that prepares you for service the bible now demands that you give your life to christ if and when you are prepared to be used by god so giving your life to christ is an activity for mature believers who desire to be greatly used by god let me assure you two of you can be believers in the same church in the same place but the possibilities that you command among many factors will depend on the degree to which you are surrendered you will never be able to receive the same kind of result with a believer who is yielded and surrendered if and when you are not you can call the same name of jesus you can read the same bible is the realm of the spirit that will tell you the difference paul i know surrendered jesus i know surrendered sons of skiva who are you hallelujah the law of total surrender stems from the understanding that all that i am and all that i have belong to him and that i must lose the ability to tell him no what this these are the details that are captured when you are dealing with the subject of surrender that any believer who has not lost the ability to tell god no is not truly yielded you must consciously as an act of your will lose the ability to tell him no total obedience if he says to go left you go left if he says to go right now you go right you see that trusting that the one who is giving you that instruction is not out to destroy you so you can even blindly follow him knowing that the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end most believers are not yielded they come to god negotiating everything at their terms they want the power of god at their terms they want victory at their terms they want an excelling life a life of dominion at their terms when you come to him you die to self i taught you that there are two things you must overcome to be great in life one is sin the second is self if you are free from sin and you are not free from self you will still suffer you must be free from sin and free from self write it down don't forget that unbelievers have two problems sin and self believers have the problem of self and let me tell you this with one confession of truth the issue of sin is done by faith but it does not take one confession to deal with self when it has to do with self it is i die daily is someone learning now yes sin there's nothing you can do about it. it it takes god to forgive you and cleanse you the bible says if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins it assures us that god is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness but when it has to do with self you die daily because there are many versions of that self you will not see now until you rise to a particular level so you die level by level you can think you are dead until promotion comes you can think you are dead until trouble comes hallelujah everybody say the sacrifice of total surrender so we took our time to pray just laying everything down let me tell you this when you surrender everything to god therein lies true liberty in the spirit taking his place to maintain your life and maintain everything around your life would destroy you you don't have that capacity i believe that most medical conditions especially that which is related to the mind come from men and women who are trying to do the job of the holy spirit in their own lives can i tell you it is burdensome to try to take the place of god in your life you don't know how many things he does if you try to step into that shoes it's too big eternity will not even afford you the opportunity to fill that space 
so hand over everything in your life to him my life is yours everything the children you gave me they are yours the husband you gave me he is yours the wife you gave me she's yours the job you gave me it belongs to you you see that way you save yourself the burden of ownership and now the burden of stewardship is the one you can handle you cannot handle the burden of an owner because whoever owns is the one who sees to it that that process or that thing continues to remain you don't have the power to make anything remain you can only maintain what you are given hallelujah our world is full of people who continue to plunge into depression and stress because in their thinking they believe that by worrying they can add one cubit to their hair and jesus took a whole chapter to talk about the burden of worrying he said consider the lilies of the field consider the birds they violate a major spiritual law they do not sow and they do not reap yet your heavenly father talks about solomon not even at dawn like the lilies the birds of the air may the lord help us to live truly surrendered lives many of you have given god everything except your finances god can touch your heart touch your praise and worship touch everything that's fine but once he comes near your wallet comes near your bank you tell him go away you don't know anything about finances i was trained and he says okay that's fine let me tell you anything you drive god from you automatically invited satan into it anything you drive god from your family and say god when you were in church i will give you your own place but now at home satan says thank you i've been looking for an opportunity to come the absence of god is automatically the presence of evil there are a few times in the bible where satan was invited he's a master at budging into lives and destinies are we together surrender is a very powerful secret powerful kingdom secret now let's hurry up the second spiritual law will start from there now i may not have the time to do all the teachings because i've taught some of them there are just a few things that i want to achieve and then we'll hopefully have the time to pray please open up your heart to learn i beseech you in the name of jesus christ and let me tell you this I, I don't mean to insult your pedigree but i i submit to you by the privilege of god's mercy that if you pay attention to the things that i teach you week in week out i give you a guarantee by the integrity of god your life will be nothing short of a sign and a wonder you may not look no 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 don't say amen it's a commitment i'm it's a burden a responsibility that you have to amen for the grace yes you have it but you must be committed to listen hallelujah the truths that i share with you number one they are not my ideas an invention of my mind that will be evil and wicked number two they are not vain babblings and philosophies of men believe me the truths that i share with you number one they are scriptural number two they are time tested principles from scripture and in the life of uncommon mentors and successful people across the globe you can rest in the fact that the spiritual menu you are receiving is not that which will destroy you but it is up to you to open up your heart to receive holistically don't just cherry pick what you think is relevant you see your own assignment is not to tamper with the equation trust the one who has led me to prepare that spiritual meal and take it holistically most believers sadly especially those who do not yet have results or notable results are usually the ones who tamper with the equations they are given are we together yes so your heart must be open we're not the first to succeed we're not the first to rise we're not the first to intend to do something that brings glory to the name of the lord many have gone before us there are still others before us and the bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise 
law number two the law of mental transformation let's hurry up now i'll just touch on them very briefly and then we pray whoever told you that your mind does not have a role to play as far as gaining mastery is concerned i shared with you my own experience that probably based on my background and my the level of spiritual exposures at that time we were not really taught when i began with god the emphasis was the health of your spirit man and i think it should be so in that order are we together when you begin your spiritual pursuit the emphasis should be the health of your spirit man not just philosophies and laws in fact encounters we started with encounters our press towards god our need for the holy spirit and that remains a viable formula till today anybody i want to introduce to spiritual things i'm not going to start teaching them about money fame no no no, no. in that order you have to start with god remember the formula i taught us here in the beginning god it always starts with god not principles encounters first but then when we got to a point where we needed to add other facets to it i didn't have that opportunity but i bless god for the privilege of men like dr miles monroe when i began to study their material and study the material of other people i found out that my mental development and the quality of my thinking and my mindset had everything to do with the overall journey to an excelling life unlike the narrative we had been given at that time that if you were doing well spiritually don't worry about what happens in your mind the holy ghost will magically correct everything as you go and there are still people who believe that fallacy till today that just because you are pressing into god spiritually it means automatically your mind will find a way of transforming itself now that's not accurate even if it's a thought that comes from well-intentioned people you have a responsibility to walk with god and understand that your mental construct has everything to do with the kind and the quality of life that you live i think it was um, bill johnson who wrote a very powerful book many years ago the supernatural power of a transformed mind and it's a book that is worth reading even till today hallelujah proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 the bible tells us that as a man thinketh in his heart interchange for mine he said so is he i spend a lot of time dealing when 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 i have the privilege of mentoring people or talking to them my primary focus is helping and guiding their spiritual lives but when we're able to achieve that the next part of call becomes to invest time and energy and quality information in reconstructing their belief systems i've taught you in this house that most of us derive our thinking and our mindsets from culture primarily the cultural experiences that we've had are shapers of our understanding the way we view life a product of culture Number two, our experiences, past and present. We've experienced all kinds of things, especially negative things, and they can build destructive memories. Are we, con are, are we together? And those destructive memories can affect us. When God is saying this, your mindset in partnership with your history is telling you this cannot happen in your life. We build our mindsets from our associations our associations friends relatives the implication of friendship is that subconsciously when you bring people um, close to your life what you are saying is that you are submitting yourself to their own ideologies too are we together i've taught you that if they're are five wise people in your life you didn't count well there are actually six you being the sixth and respectfully speaking if there are five foolish people in your life you also didn't count well there are actually how many if there are five prosperous people in your life your closest circle of friends 
there are six prosperous people if there are five defeated mediocres flattering themselves competing with one another prepared or not you must know that you are also part of that competition he that walks with the wise the bible says shall be wise himself it says but the companion of fools shall be destroyed so we derive our mindsets medical science teaches us that children at birth or humans are programmed in two ways number one is genetic programming as it comes from their parents but the second and more important programming is called environmental programming are we together when man fell the first question the lord asked him when he said where are you he said i heard your voice but i hid because i was naked next question who told you you have submitted your ears and your influence to another entity the failure that you have embraced in your life came as a result of a programming there are many people today listen i have seen so many people tongue talking people and sometimes anointed men and women of god and sometimes when they see me do the things that god does through me you know the, most of them will rejoice but believe me they do not know that there is an ancient stumbling block resident within their minds that makes them believe that it's impossible for god to use you that far hallelujah yeah. there are people today the limitation to your exploits in the spirit and even towards gaining mastery has nothing to do with a demonic attack all the spirits have been driven yet you are still failing you know why because there is a stumbling block there is something that has been programmed in your mind that you can't go this far but by this teaching in the name of jesus that stumbling block by the power that raised christ from the dead let that stumbling block depart from you now when i began my walk with god my life was full of visions and i submit to you some of them have seen them happen already some are still on the way happening and others are yet to come but when i saw some of these visions you can imagine at that level starting naive in spiritual things on many grounds and seeing god show me all of these things it was up to me now to believe god can you do this with me to the nations across the globe thank god for the mentorship of great men like dr miles munro who challenged me and made me know that it is possible i told you ambitiously i wrote a letter to several men of god when i was starting in nigeria across africa i took that step of faith i can't even remember what i wrote i just wrote and told all of them god called me what do they have to say how can you guide me and to my greatest shock i was called at the post office that there was one reply waiting for me and I went there and opened that letter and this was Dr. Miles Munro wrote it handwritten and was encouraging me and said listen as I then he said I have the largest church in Bahamas by the grace of God and still I am relevant in the political space I am advisor to many presidents I have written books with many bestsellers never never limit yourself and I said this is it as simple as what i'm telling you is there are some of you seated here you have robbed us of the books that we should be reading you have robbed us of the help them please somebody is already falling under the anointing there i'm just sensing impartations oh this night we're on a journey this night too in the name of jesus books some of you businesses some of you even ministries listen never never downplay the extent of limitation that a poor or faulty mindset can bring to your destiny don't you think demons are the only things that stop you from going forward mindsets there are times demons don't need to do anything when they find a mindset as large as them there they will go back because the same thing will happen to you hallelujah and please look at me we who are privileged to be in this side of the continent and this nation subliminally 
we have been programmed as individuals and as a people to put limitations on our life our history itself naturally comes with propositions of limitations i'm not talking of being blindly ambitious i'm talking of being full of confidence knowing this that he that cometh from above is above all the lord began to bring several layers of deliverance to my life number one was deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 you hear me read it often that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to observe and to do all his commandments which i commanded this day that the lord will set joshua selman on high above how many nations believe me when i saw all nations i believed it by the way this whole revelation was in one room all nations i believe when i started seeing visions i will never forget i was in port harcourt in 2007 attending to a dear lady then who was sick she would later pass on and you know part of the people that were staying with in port harcourt and i remember the teaching hospital there it was my turn to attend them you know as a man of god and i suddenly looked outside from that bed space and i was open to a vision i saw 37 flags and that was the international headquarters of koinonia i saw it there i wrote it down i said lord i believe it we are going there can i tell you this please look at me for some of you nothing good has come to your life because your mindset has commanded every good thing to return every good thing to the extent that if people favor you you don't believe it because your mindset has been so deconstructed it is against the laws of your life for some can something be that easy there are many of you here who intellectually speaking you are about the brightest and the finest yet you have fallen into this deception of satan that you are good for nothing apostle i think i'm good for nothing if i ask you why you'll say i don't speak very well uh, my english is this and that give me another reason i come from the village you will say my grandmother is in the village my grandfather is in the village i was born and bred in the village drinking well water what has that got to do with a glorious destiny can i tell you you can choose to be in egypt and yet be thinking canaan in fact you have to think canaan to go to canaan right from when i was in one room i stand by the god of heaven i believed everything god told me i'm not just speaking in terms of finances and all of that no i believed it that one day i will speak to kings and i will speak to nations i believed it jeremiah 1 5 say not that i am a child but to whoever i send you to verse 6 you see jeremiah cried and said i cannot speak for i am a child verse 7 he rebuked him and he says say not that i am a child for thou shalt go to all that i shall send thee and who and whatsoever i command thee thou shalt speak for someone god is speaking to you here that he's lifting you not just spiritually i hope you understand the concept of kingdom advance now when we teach like this we are not just talking pulpit for some of you god has told you he's taking you to un you and when you think about it you just laugh at yourself and say me i came to challenge that devil every mindset that will not let you rise ill speakings of men that kept putting you down i curse it right now in the name of jesus please sit down unfortunately sadly but unfortunately many of us probably came from families where it was a norm to speak words of discouragement i remember a particular person many years ago who cried he got an award and when he called his parents the parents said he should go and return it to the rightful owner he got an award true story return it to who because the father said no this this is my stupid and useless son it's impossible to have that award 
There's a gentleman, I think he's here in Koinonia. Um, I, I usually minimize talking about things like this because eventually it's, it, we're, we're talking to the whole globe, but it's something that is very good. The gentleman came and met me, I think a, a month or two in school of ministry, and he had designed a drone, a very intelligent, a drone system that will be such a blessing, you know, to several people and several parastatos across this nation. And he had designed also something like the engine of a vehicle or something like that. I looked at him and I held his hand. I said, my dear one, listen to me. No matter what happens, let me give you two confessions. One, it's going to be difficult to rise to the top. Go and read my, listen to my message, this grace called favor. Because in Nigeria, you need favor, not just skill to rise. Number two, I told him, no matter what happens, don't give up on your dreams. How many times have you seen people who produce results that were far less than you know what you know you could do, and yet you are forced to clap for them because their mindsets were more superior than yours? Not because they had a better idea. Because of the color of your skin, because of your sociological context you can allow, allow life to reduce you to a point where many of us call ourselves grasshoppers they limited themselves god never called them grasshoppers satan never called them grasshoppers they called themselves grasshoppers it's a popular story many men of god have given this story of an eagle an eaglet now they call it huh that was around with birds chickens because the eagle didn't have her mother to help mentor her and let her know that look you are meant for the skies and the hills and it was around with the chickens all the time eating and feeding like the chickens and then one time he saw the mother eagle just flying and soaring around and noticed that look my 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 design is similar to that one flying not this one's there and that the eaglet just tried to take a step of faith and found out that she was flying sometimes let me tell you this one of the way god delivers you listen let me tell you how god delivers men from negative mindsets he would take you out of the environment that caused it for a long time is is a system of quarantine he would take you away from the naysayers and the negative circles many of you right now if you want to do something good the moment you see your classmates or the moment you see people who used to know you they will laugh at you and say even you so god will take you to a place where nobody knows you you now see the reason why it he said kill everybody in jericho only one woman left rahab do you know why because her job there was a prostitute and god was about to change her life if there was one person who knew her history he would be the person who would stop her later on destroy everybody i'm about to give this woman a new beginning so that they don't see her and tell the future husband that this one you don't know who this one is i was her customer so sometimes hear me i'm speaking prophetically to some of you because there are some of you for god to help you he will have to take you out of that environment that negative environment where you keep receiving ill speakings and quarantine you in a spiritual environment like this where you keep hearing faith filled words six months under this kind of atmosphere and all that is left in your destiny is fire burns every mediocrity out of your life when the lord sent me to abuja i've told you at the risk of sounding proud forgive me if i do or you think i do is to the glory of god when i was coming you know i've heard a lot of things about ministry in abuja and, and with all due respect and honor to all who serve the lord you know faithfully in this city when i came i looked at the place and i was praying and the holy spirit told me to go and buy the map and i i asked them to get me the map of abuja i looked at it and i looked at everything in the midst of my prayer now i say this respectfully not not to communicate pride the city became small literally it just became small you know like you are standing and you are looking at children playing and i said no come on this is how do you think god is going to send you to the nations with this mindset how do you arrive at another man's land and yet do what god says you should do 
dear businessman how do you think your conglomerate will go so far what guarantee do you have that people will be interested in you they limited god by saying they limited god by saying some of you from your background you have never seen sufficiency even if the school fees is two thousand mama will bring one five the brother will bring this they will now beg you know not, you've not seen so when god speaks to you and say you it will get to a point where you will be given to nations it's difficult for you to conceive it but i'm here to speak to someone no matter what your mindset is saying now what god says about you must remain yeah. hallelujah Paradoxia. Let me encourage you. See, there is no need living a fake life. Don't fake what can be real. Don't have a, 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 a low level thinking and then you cover it with good clothes. Cover it with good shoes. Cover it with a borrowed car. Leave all those things. Your first assignment after your encounter with the Holy Spirit is to walk on your mind. From where thou art, lift your eyes your legs may not go there but your eyes can go listen do you know why i'm speaking to you now about this there are some of you as this service is ongoing the holy spirit is reminding you remember what i told you in 2013 by now we would have been walking in it but your fear your fear of this you can't i said start the company you've not even registered it till now I told you I will use you mightily. You said you are a stammerer. I brought Aaron to you. You still said Aaron is not intelligent. What do you want? There is nothing you cannot do. This is what I believe. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. And you're not about to stop doing Hear me! Listen to me. You may trek after service to go back home. Trek with honor while your mind is buying the cars there may be five members in the church now don't worry you don't need to fake figures and live a fake life is unnecessary while you are there let your mindset be in that crusade ground winning souls in their multitudes for jesus dear esther you may be in shushan but let your mind be in the palace dear joseph you may be in prison but let your mind sit you on the throne. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. There are many of you who do not have the mental strength to survive the seasons of small beginning. Your minds are too fragile. Your obsession for endorsement and reaffirmation will not allow you to move through the tides of negative speaking till you become a champion. Nobody claps for you when you are starting. They only clap for champions. You are going to move while people speak. You are going to move while people gossip. You are going to move while people prophesy and say, watch, nothing will happen. The stamina comes from your spirit, but is reflected through your mind mental strength hmm. that if somebody tells you i hope you know you will fail tell them be patient i will answer you five years later and you have that stamina listen unfortunately today we live in a social media world where people are under so much obsession to be right nobody wants to no champions are not like that they are focused and determined the smoke that rises from the celebration of your result is an answer to the naysayers. You just keep moving. Apostle, I never saw my father build a house. Right now, I'm 41. I'm 45. Is there hope for me? 
it is not lack of cement or blocks or concrete i assure you the house has not been built here you have received a speaking that i am in abuja and we are here to manage we are here to live defeated lives do you know there are people who it is not the government that has stratified them they stratified themselves as soon as they stepped into abuja even if they have hundred thousand in their account and they are late to take a boat or uber they will feel guilty they'll say no 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 do you know what we are not for it's not for abba you can start as a carpenter's son but there was a time they stopped calling jesus carpenter's son find out what happened that the word carpenter's son or the expression stopped jesus never said don't call me carpenter's son again he did something else and they said you are christos now the anointed and the bible says let this mind be in you listen i'm not teaching you to fuel loss you know let me balance it there are people who when you hear this kind of teaching because you have you are determined to not even be spiritual in the first place when you hear these kinds of teachings it agrees with the desire for carnality and just a rat race of materialism that's not what i'm teaching i'm teaching you a healthy confidence that is derived from who you are in christ let them laugh at you i know that you may have limitation in speech but your products will do the correction of your english can i tell you don't fall for this this thing that society tries to bring bring you down what tribe are you what name are you you are not very beautiful you are not very handsome and people continue to kill themselves day and night i have learned and i teach the school of ministry students every year that everybody on earth is a summation of assets and liabilities but can i tell you one truth everything you acknowledge magnifies including the negative aspects of your life Philemon 1 and verse 6, it says that the communication of your faith might be effectual. Philemon, not Philippians, Philemon 1, 6. The communication of your faith might become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. There are some things I have received in my mind. They can't be undone. Number one, I cannot fail. Honestly, it's not pride. Forgive me. I have indoctrinated myself by the spirit if there are five people who will succeed on earth i will start praying for the remaining four because one position for sure has been taken number two i do not believe any power in existence can take my life before my time now, he say, is 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 a don't listen. Your destiny is your responsibility. Forget whatever has happened around your life. Number three, I believe that I will not be. I waved poverty goodbye, and it waved me back. When you wave somebody back, you have agreed. Bye bye. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Kete branda kata pa kotos koto prekete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.